I'm making my box out of walnut, so to begin, I have a piece here that I'm running through the planer to get to a half inch thick. And then I'll take that piece over to the table saw and cut it to three and three quarters of an inch. Next up at the router table, I use a quarter inch spiral bit and cut a quarter inch by quarter inch groove for the bottom panel. Next up is the table saw where I have my dado blade installed to cut a 3 8 inch wide cut at a quarter inch deep. This is for the top. And I also take the opportunity while the board is long and wide like this to go ahead and sand it. So I hit it with 80 grit, 120, and 180 grit sandpaper uh, with my orbital sander. I like to pre-finish the insides of my boxes so I spray a couple of coats of this shellac before I cut the miters. After the first two coats dried, I sand the surface using the 220 grit sandpaper and spray two more coats. And to remove any excess dust, I just like to use a brush. I head over to the miter saw and cut the six and a quarter and eight and a quarter pieces. Next up is time to cut the miters. I'm using my crosscut sled with the blade tilted to 45 degrees and I put a miter on one edge of each of the four boards. Now I'm gonna focus on the smaller six inch pieces and I'm going to mark it at six inches up here on the top. I'm going to line it up with the kerf and the fence and to make sure I can get repeatable cuts, I'm going to put a stop block up against it. With the stop block in place, I cut both of the six and a quarter inch pieces to six inches. And now I'm going to measure eight inches and make the cuts. And while I'm at the table saw, I cut the bottom panel to size. And just like a majority of my projects, my glue of choice is to use this high glue from Tight Bond. Before putting the bottom panel in, I like to find the better looking side and making sure that when a person opens the box, they're going to be looking at the better side of this panel. With masking tape on the back to act as clamps, I go ahead and put this box together. Uh, one of the important parts of this box here is to make sure that the groove on the top of the lid is level and flush all the way around. So that means that the miters have to come together uh, and reference. And I reference my bench to make sure that that's the case. Before taping the last corner, I push the whole box down, referencing my tabletop to make sure that everything is flat. The next day after the glue dried, I used my miter key jig to put quarter inch keys centered on the corners of all four sides of this box. The dado blades left a quarter inch groove in the box, so I just cut some scrap walnut to a quarter of an inch thick. And I made sure to test fit these before actually putting any glue on it because the glue can sometimes cause it to swell, although the high glue not as much. Um, but you don't want to fight with it once you have glue on it. Uh, so just test it. If it fits, put the glue on it. And once the key is in, I like to look at both edges to make sure that there's not a gap and that the key is seated properly in the groove. And then I let them set for about two hours to make sure the glue dries before cutting away the excess. I wipe a thinned coat of seal coat shellac on the surface of the box, making sure that when the pore filler is applied, it doesn't change the color of the box, only fills the pores. There are several different ways to fill pores, and in this project, I'm just using some Timbermate wood filler as my preferred method. Uh, it's pretty easy to apply. This is a brand new can, so it was relatively soft, but I recommend adding a little bit of water to the wood filler just to make it easier to apply. Uh, and the key here is to work across the grain, making sure that you get the wood filler in all of the pores. And you want to remove as much of the excess that you can, making sure to leave it in the pores and not removing any. And you want to just continue your way around the box on all four sides. And you'll know when the timber made is dried because it turns into a chalky color as you can see here. So after that dries, we're ready to sand it off. To finish the outside of the box, I'm spraying four to five coats of shellac using the same method that I did on the inside of the box. 
The lid on this project is what really makes it stand out in my opinion and I'm using some walnut burl veneer and it's pretty wavy so to, to flatten it I use a super soft two from veneer supplies um, and I just spray it on both sides of the veneer and then I put it inside of my shop made press uh, separating each piece of veneer with paper towels and I leave it in the press overnight changing the paper towels every 6 to 12 hours. And the final clamp. After about 24 hours in the press, I like to iron the veneer to finish the drying process. It's just a little bit faster than if you were to leave it in the press for two to three days. Um, so I needed to batch a few of these boxes out, so I opted to use an iron. And after both of the veneers have been ironed and dried, I go ahead and glue it to the solid walnut top. Uh, I'm using the tight bond cold press glue, but of course you could just use hide glue as well. It works just fine. With the glue on the surface, I go ahead and place the veneer on it, making sure that it's aligned properly. And then I flip it over, put glue on the other side, and then I put the veneer on that side as well. And I put it in the press and clamp it and let it set overnight. After I take the panel out of the press, I go ahead and sand it with 180 grit sandpaper to remove any glue that's on the surface. Next up, I spray a coat of shellac to seal the surface in, making sure that the wood filler doesn't change any of the appearance. And just like before, I'll use the Timbermate wood filler with mixed with water to thin it to act as a pore filler. And I just like to use a plastic card scraper to squeegee off the excess of the wood filler. And the good thing about this wood filler is you can just, whatever excess you have left, you can just stick back in the can and you can use it later. And yet again, more sanding. After the wood filler dried, I hit it with 180 grit sandpaper to remove the excess that was on the surface uh, and smooth out the surface before applying any finish. With masking tape on the panel, I go ahead and cut it to width at the table saw. So I'm going to remove the tape since I just cut the, uh, the board. And as you can see, this is the side that I cut. It's nice and crisp and there's no tear out. Alright, so the fit, I mean it fits in there pretty good. Uh, but I think all I'm going to do now is just use my, my hand plane. To, uh, to get it down to a better fit that's a little more loose than that. So now I'm going to cut this to length again here at the table saw just using my, my miter gauge. And just like on the box body and throughout the project I'm just going to spray a few coats of shellac on the lid. And that's all I'm going to spray on the top because this stuff puts on a thick coat and I don't want to create any runs on the bottom side of this lid. So I'm going to do really light coats with this spray shellac. And I'm going to let this set for about 20 to 30 minutes before I flip it over and then I'll spray the other side. I'm going to let this side fully dry before flipping it over because I don't want these paint pyramids to put any indentations on the top. And after the first two coats of shellac dried, I sand the surface using this 320 grit sandpaper. I'm using my scratch awl to, to make a starter hole for my drill bit. And speaking of drill bits, the one that I had that fit the closest was a 9 16 of an inch drill bit. And I have a piece of tape on here to act as a stop so I know how far to drill. And then when I removed the tape, everything was nice and clean, no tear out because that was a concern drilling into this veneer. And this is a 5 8 inch brass knob that I picked up from Horton Brasses. I will link to that information in this video description on here on Simple Cove. But for three bucks, uh, these these knobs are amazing quality, and uh, they turned out great. I thought they were going to be too small at the beginning, but they actually turned out to be just the right size, in my opinion. You want to make sure when installing this knob that it goes down and it, it goes down straight and square, and it doesn't start pulling in crooked. Um, so after I got halfway down, I went ahead and switched over to using my pliers with the soft cloth here, so I didn't mar the surface, and everything turned out great. Uh, it's nice and square to the to the lid, and it's snug. And as you can see, this uh, here it is on the veneer, and it just looks amazing. If you want more details on how to build this box, including the SketchUp diagram, check out SimpleCoveGuild.com, where there's three more videos on how to build this box step by step. Let me know what you think of this project with a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button, and if you're not subscribed, hit that button too. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next build video.